Hey, go fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome to Foot of Eagles. Now, we're coming up a little bit later than we usually do on a Tuesday, and that's because we've been waiting patiently for Howie Roseman and the Eagles to submit officially their five cuts to get down to the 85-man roster. That was due at 4 p.m. Well, they waited well past 4 p.m. to give us the actual names, so we're going to give you those names now, showing you the first five players who are cut from the Eagles' 90-man roster. First, though, I do want to quickly give my take on the Eagles' J.J. Arthega Whiteside trade, and shout out to Chase Sr. last night for filling in as that one would happen later on in the evening. He did a great job there. But just quickly, you guys probably saw the video. If you didn't, here's the breakdown. Philadelphia finally gets rid of one of the worst draft decisions we've seen the Eagles do over the past couple of years. A second rounder and J.J. Arthega Whiteside. You hear all the stories. You know, they could have had D.K. Metcalf. Well, now Metcalf Cap and Whiteside are on the same team. So now, you know, maybe he learns from DK Metcalf and eventually becomes a good player, although clearly uh, does not seem to be the case. I'm surprised, though, when you look at the trade breakdown, that Philadelphia did get a player back and a decent player. Ugo uh, Amadi is how you say his last name, I believe. I practiced that. It's hard to get these names down. Uh, he's an interesting player. We'll talk about him in just a second. First off, Whiteside, again, was not going to make this roster. The fact that you were able to actually trade him, to me, is very surprising because he was doing nothing at the tight end spot after his conversion from wide receiver. It's not like he was going to be your second string tight end behind Dallas Goddard and then they, you know, shipped him away. No, I mean, you weren't going to get anything from him. And I know that Ugo is not necessarily the best safety in the entire National Football League, but he at least has some starting game experience and a pretty decent PFF grade as we're kind of reading up on him there. The good news is, too, he also has played some nickels. He has some Avante Maddox uh, um, insurance if Maddox were to go ahead and get injured or not play well, although Maddox is a great nickel cornerback. So very much a depth guy, very much a not necessarily shocking trade or a trade that drastically improves the Philadelphia Eagles. However, it is worth noting that they did finally get rid of the mistake that was J.J. Ortega Whiteside, and this is a great example of why you've got to hit on those early draft picks or else you're going to spend a second-round draft pick on a player who does literally nothing the entire time he is on a rookie deal in Philadelphia. So good news, he's gone. See ya, J.J. Ortega Whiteside. Um, add a great pin comment down below. Grade the trade. I think this is an A. I think, I mean, <laughs> For, for a player you were just going to cut and let right off into the sunset, I think this leaves an A. You get something in return. I will give this one an A. Give me your thoughts down below in the pinned comment. All right, so now we move, move, move over to uh, the meat and potatoes of today's video, and that is the five roster moves that they made, the five cuts, essentially, that they made uh, just really a couple of minutes ago jumping on here to film this video. Quickly, before I give you the names, though, I want to give you the important cut dates that are coming up. Today, obviously, by 4 p.m., every single team had to go from 90 to 85, so only five initial cuts. It's not a massive, massive cut like you'll see happening a little bit later on. Philadelphia, with those 85 players, will play at Cleveland on Sunday, the, the, the 21st. They travel tomorrow uh, to Cleveland for the beginning of one, uh, sorry, two joint practices with the Browns. We'll have plenty of updates on that tomorrow. Um, and then, of course, they'll cut down to 80 on the 23rd. That's one week from today. So that'll be another five-player cut down to 23. Then you play the Dolphins in your final preseason game on the 27th. And then three days later, you go from 80 to 53 with a bunch of practice squad guys mixed in there as well. So obviously plenty of coverage uh, on all of those. But those are the important dates that you need to know about. And again, I don't want to poo-poo the guys that are cut today, but very clearly the first five to go were at the very bottom of the roster. And so it's not like Philadelphia had a surprise cut today, although a couple of them were like, eh. I think they chose the depth of the Philadelphia Eagles. They had pretty good depth on this roster, as we all know. Um, first one here, William Dunkel. You might have met William Dunkel if you watched the Eagles preseason game via the local Eagle broadcast uh, against the Jets. Dunkel was a guy that was raved about by the color commentator. I'm blanking on his name right now. But this was a guy who was an all-team uh, or all-first-team Mountain West. I mean, a very, very good offensive tackle. But when you go from all-team uh, or all-first-team Mountain West conference to the NFL, you're no longer a very, very good tackle. I think Dunkel, out of all the players on this list, I, I, is someone who could definitely be signed somewhere else. I'd expect him to go ahead and be picked up by a a weaker offensive line. But Dunkel's problem is that Philadelphia's offensive line is absolutely unbelievably stacked and so you know the room at left tackle the room at right tackle there just really isn't any and so Dunkel went ahead uh, and got released by the wayside and again not necessarily a full rip on him I thought he had some decent plays in the fourth quarter of that, of that football game against the Jets but when you go through the offensive line Philadelphia has there's not a deeper one in the NFL a lot of the second string guys could be starters on a lot of other NFL teams there's the old meme that, that was going around this uh uh, this summer saying the Eagles' second-string offensive line could start for the Giants' first string. So Dunkel was let go yesterday. They let go two of them yesterday, but obviously one of the five. Now, we mentioned that, obviously, these are not surprise cuts. And again, no offense to the guys that were let go, but these are not surprise cuts. Will there be a surprise cut that happens later on? If there is one, give me a name. Give me a name that you think could be cut, a surprise name. It's not going to be Jalen Rager. Don't say that. Come on, come on, give me someone else. Give me a surprise name that could be cut uh, in the coming days and weeks. Wait, next player that was let go mentioned this on the show yesterday, but it's official. Al, uh, Ali 
I think Fayad is how you say his last name. I've heard multiple pronunciations. But the inside linebacker, I should say, sorry, outside linebacker of the, the Philadelphia Eagles. And again, not as loaded at that spot as uh, the offensive line, but you still were behind Reddick. You're behind Patrick Johnson uh, and the new draft pick, Kyron Johnson, who they're pretty pleased with. They kind of like what Johnson's doing, both the Johnsons, but what Kyron Johnson has done um, so far. And again, just not a lot of room there. And that's how these cuts go. You can be a decent player and you can be a special teamer on a different football team. But if your specific position group has players in front of you that there's no way you're going to pass, well, that's that's when cuts come into uh, a play, and obviously he was let go. Um, okay, make sure you guys are go ahead and subscribe to the channel because we're going to be covering the Eagles, obviously, on this channel all year long, whether it's me or somebody else over the next couple of days and weeks. We saw Chase fill in yesterday, did a fantastic job. These cuts come very, very quick. They come as surprises sometimes. Sometimes they come in the morning, at night, midday. What trade is in the morning, night, midday, we cover it here on the channel. So our promise to you is to always give you the best Eagles coverage. So go down below and hit that red button. Also, give us that little notification bell click as well. The way you can be notified when we do drop the latest videos, like the surprise one yesterday when Whiteside was traded. Um, of course, if you guys want shout-outs, we're going to give shout-outs to 10 new random subscribers uh, probably in tomorrow's video. So if you're a random new subscriber, make sure you guys go ahead uh, and subscribe for a chance to get a shout-out. Very simple. Uh, okay, Lance Lenore, the next player to go ahead and be let go by the Philadelphia Eagles, the wide receiver who did catch a pass. Did he catch two? I forgot how many. He was targeted, at least, in the Jets game. Again, they're not going to keep more than six wide receivers with a couple of practice squad guys. And now, with Philadelphia having a stacked wide receiver core, Lenore is let go. Another indication that they're probably going to go ahead and keep Jalen Rager. Just a little side note there. Um, one of the reasons why Lenore was let go, because you have a guy named A.J. Brown, and Brown is fantastic, and you should definitely go ahead and pick up his jersey. Rock that jersey at chatsports.com forward slash A.J. Brown. You will not be disappointed by the fact that these are legit. They're official. I mean, you can go online and find some fake jerseys, and you get them in the mail, and it's like, is that midnight green? Is is Brown spelled wrong? Like, what's the stitching going? No, this is the real the real deal stuff. Same link. I got a Devontae Smith jersey that I think is fantastic and is obviously 100% authentic. So pick up your uh, official Chat Sports AJ Brown jersey or link Chat Sports AJ Brown down below in the comment section right now. You will not be disappointed. All right, next player let go is J J uh, Jared Maiden, the safety, uh, who was an early camp favorite. When you get into, you know, the days before training camp, you get a lot of articles coming out saying, you know, players that might make a run at training camp. Maiden was one of them. It was mainly due to the fact that there were a lot of question marks around the safety position, and there still technically are. I don't think we have the best safety group in the National Football League, but it, it seems to me as being Marcus Epps and Anthony Harris. And then behind them, you have Joe tart and Kayvon Wallace. Until you essentially have four safeties at two spots, are you going to get to a point where you need a fifth safety? Is Maiden really going to be that fifth safety didn't perform that well um as well and if they're comfortable enough to let go with jared maiden it at least shows that they probably are going to keep cave on wallace although hmm, i don't know if that's accurate though don't 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 quote me on that let's just say that but maiden was let go um and obviously was uh another player who you know, you just kind of go through the depth chart and you got to trim the fat, and, and he was one of the players. You know, it's no offense. It just happens. All right, final player, Jimmy Moreland. Again, these are guys that are released or, uh, you know, put on, on on IR, and so they create roster spaces in that way. Moreland, the cornerback, uh, not a lot of room there. And you can go through the Eagles cornerback depth chart. There just isn't really a spot for him. You know, you're kind of hoping to be a special teams guy. That did not work out, and so then he was went ahead and uh, let go. Again, I don't want to, you know, poo-poo the fact that people are losing jobs. We're not going to go ahead and say, oh, these people stink. And so obviously they, they were cut, but this was the players that needed to be let go. There are no shocks here. I mean, Dunkel maybe, maybe Lance Lenore. But overall, I mean, again, there's just not a lot of room there for Dunkel uh, and Ali and Lance Lenore and Jared Maiden and Jimmy Moorhead. So they were all let go. Those are the first five. We wish them well. We hope that they find other practice squads and other teams. And most likely, you know, the vast majority of them will be able to do that. Um, okay, speaking of the future here, what, what's going on later on this week? We're going to be getting into an Eagles-Browns preview which will take place looking ahead to what will probably be the game where you're going to see a lot of Jerry, uh, a, a lot of Jalen Hurts. Probably, probably not too much, you know, maybe a quarter, quarter and a half, but this is going to be the dress rehearsal game. You think that week two is now week three, essentially, with the uh, one less preseason game. How excited are you for the Eagles at the Browns? I'm pretty pumped. I mean, I'm on a scale of, of I'd say, one to ten. I'm, I'm at a nine or a ten. I mean, I want to see if last week's one drive was a fluke or if they're going to be able to move the football on anybody. And this is a much better football team, especially defensively, if they all play in the Cleveland Browns than the New York Jets. And so you get a good look at the Eagles' offense, a good look at the Eagles' defense, and so I am very much pumped for that. So we're going to have great coverage coming up tomorrow, and then obviously great coverage uh, following the football game as well in terms of breaking down winners and losers, as we always do here on Philadelphia Eagles Now. Okay, make sure you guys are subscribed. As I always say, 10 new subscribers will get a shout-out, I believe, in tomorrow's video. The shout-outs are up to Producer Trace. So if you want a shout-out and you're brand new, DM Producer Trace. His links are all down below in the description box. Of course, you can always uh, subscribe. That way you're notified when we drop our latest videos as well by hitting that notification bell. 
Okay, all-time of the day on our Philadelphia Eagles 85-man roster cut. We gave you guys the five that were let go. Uh, for Philadelphia Eagles, now producer Trace, I'm Thomas Mott signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day.